So finally got a project done and made a community post about it. Um, the Sunetis and Kaihan, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And what they are are basically leg gators. So this is a Kaihan and this would be a Suneti right here. Now there's differences to them. Basically a Suneti you would wear with armor but not necessarily. Um, they did wear them with Hakama. And uh, the Kaihan were, didn't have any armor plating. So these are made out of leather. And they've got plates riveted to it. Now the plating that they used would be a lot thinner strips. But in the same sense, they would it would be like this. So I made my own version. It's not an accurate representation of it. Um, but then they would have stitching where it hold things together, and that's what I did on these. And then they just tie on. So yeah, these are all. It's about 16 gauge plate steel. Um, each one weighs about. 1.38, 1 pound, 3.8 ounces. So they're not like terribly heavy, but they're not super light neither. And um, they would wear these also with Hakama, and I'll show you. Now, Kaihan, I didn't have fabric or cotton. Normally, that's what these would be made out of. I had leather, so that's why I used. And I made mine to what I wanted, and I just used two pieces. And they used eyelets to put the front piece on. But this one, if you notice, only has one long strand on it. Because there's certain ways you can tie these, and I'll get into that. So the reason why they would wear the Kaihan is if you had to travel on foot and you're going through brush or whatever wearing a hakama of course they're really baggy basically trousers you didn't want them getting snagged on anything torn or whatever if maybe they might be going into a fight too they would possibly put these on so that way they're again their hakama wasn't flying around or somebody might be able to step on it if you were low enough or whatnot. So that's basically what these are for. And farmers would wear these too when they're out farming. So to protect them against bugs and insects and everything. So they had a purpose. Like I said, they were normally out of fabric or cotton. But since I didn't have that and I didn't want to sit there hand stitching it, I made it out of leather because I have leather. Now, Sunetti, of course, this would have been worn with during the feudal war times on their legs, on their, basically it covers their shin. And I'll put them on so you can see what they look like. But they would also wear them during the Edo period too. Because they would also, underneath um, samurai, were also some were police. They would wear maybe something like this. The arm ones, they had steel plates, which I'm making too. And chain mail underneath their kimono. That was cut a certain way so you couldn't see it. So they did wear armor during that time period too. It just wasn't all cut, decked out and covered. So these, of course, as you can see, these have three strands, one, two, and three. Now, saw one YouTube video that, I brought this up before, someone said they would tie their knots in the front, which meant they were going to war. That isn't the reason why they tied the knots in the front. You tie the knots on some of these in the front too. Um, you don't have to, there's no set standard, but the reason why they would tie them the way they did was if they got damaged and it, prevented your mo movability, you could untie it very quickly and drop it to the ground and keep fighting. 
Whereas if you have to reach behind you to untie it, well, you can't see your enemy coming. You're distracted with that. So that's why a lot of their knots are in the front. So they can just untie it, drop it, and keep going. Which, when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Because, well, someone's trying to kill you. So same with the cajon. They would tie it in the front. If it got damaged or whatever, snagged, where they couldn't get out of it, they can then tie it in the front and just keep going. So it was a disposable item, basically. A kion is more disposable than these. So these would cost you way more money. Um, didn't want to do like a tutorial on how to do these because I've never made these before and I'm a novice at leatherworking. Not an expert. I do it for fun. So let me reposition the camera and then I'll show you how these are put on with the Hakama. So give me a moment and we'll be so, right back. Let's try the Sunetis first. So basically these are cut a certain way. This back side right here has a taper. As you see these taper downwards so these go down. So basically you wrap it around, you grab a bunch of your hakama, Now granted they might have people help them with this, do this, and I'm doing this by myself so bear with me. And my Hakama is not cooperating with me. There we go. And of course I'm doing this kind of blind. So they come in the front. Tie that down. Okay, so there's one. Now for the next one. And it, like I said, is kind of tricky when you're doing it by yourself. So I'm not trying to get this like absolutely perfect here.
just trying to do it so I can show kind of what they're like. And you can make the straps as long as you need them to be. There's no real set standard. But they should be made to basically your leg, pretty much. And there you go. So basically that's what they look like once you have them on. It's just like that. Here. So that's what you would have on, just like that. And then of course you have protection near the back of your calf. Now I don't have them bunched up properly, so the hot come on. But it would give you protection to your calf, your shin. So basically that's what you're doing. And now you don't have like this big poofy thing flowing around you. And then if you need to take them off because they're damaged, you have one tie in the back and you can throw them off really quickly. So. and they come off really, really fast. So that's those. So that's how they work. They do weigh your leg down, of course, because, well, they got steel plates in them. And these ones work a little different. Like I said, they only got one string. So basically, you just take it, strings, grab two, and then you would just crisscross it, and just pull it. As you went up, come to the front, and you can tie them in the back, no set deal, like I said. It's just easier if it's tied in the front, you can drop them if you need to. That's the whole point. Trying to bunch up a hakama though is quite the challenge and these are a lot easier to put on because you crisscross you know kind of like crisscross applesauce and now I think I'm going to get a cat Hawkeye is all messed up. So they come in front and then you just tie it. So it's kind of messed up. You can see it sticking out right there. But that's basically it for these two. So that's how they work. Trying to wrap the Hakama is the hardest part. Because you can see it's sticking out right here. But that's basically it. That's how they work. So like when you see the movies, Harley, you see the movies like the remake of 13 Assassins and everything where you see, if you really pay attention, they're actually wearing a Hakama and they're wearing these on them. And it's to keep the bagginess from 
floofing every puffing out everywhere on them. So, and then if you untie it, they're real quick to take off. You don't have to worry about it. So there's no fuss, no muss. Now when you crisscross them like that, it takes a little bit longer to take them off, of course. But they're pretty darn easy. So let me stop right there and readjust my camera again, and we'll be right back. That's um, basically part of what a samurai would wear during feudal times and Edo period. Would I say they're difficult to put on? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, you should be probably standing up when you wrap it around your hakama because it will pull down, it'll make it too tight. So I can see why they had people help them put their armor on. They're not easy to do. And I made the strings extra long just to make sure they would wrap around. So, yeah. They're kind of fun though. Um, probably do some cutting videos with them. That'll be kind of neat. Like I said, I'm doing the arm guards right now have to do a few adjustments to those and I still have to add the armor plating to those and then I'll do a video on those um, won't be doing a tutorial how to make this stuff there's plenty out there like I said I have leather I'm a novice I like my wife got me one year a leather kit so I like playing around with it making stuff so I have fun with it it was quick it was easy so that's all I've got for Samurai Sunday, guys. Figure I'd get that out there. Got a new video coming up on Bo Shurkins. So, which means hidden hand weapon. So, keep an eye out for that one coming up. There's a couple things I still have to get to do that video. And stick around because there might be some cutting right after this.